my name is Petra Illig. I'm a physician in Anchorage, Alaska, and today I'd like to tell you about the medicinal history of Rhodiola rosea. It's an ancient herb used by circumpolar people for thousands of years. It was first described in the writings of Jason and the Argonauts. Um, you may remember Jason was on the quest for the Golden Fleece, and he had to go through lots and lots of challenges to get there, many of them physically and mentally exhausting. And he discovered this plant that was described up on the high ledges of the Caucasus Mountains, the Caucasus Mountains being where basically Asia and Europe intersect. And when he found this plant and drenched himself in a potion made of this, it gave him the strength and the mental focus to overcome all of his obstacles and challenges. It had gone on into folklore for many years thereafter, was considered by the ancient Greeks as well as the ancient Vikings as a potion for athletes and warriors to help them with the strength, physical and mental performance strength that was needed for their tasks. Further on, um, it was used in the uh, Soviet armamentarium, heavily investigated primarily in the 1940s and 1950s when the Soviets were looking for their own botanicals um, to help their soldiers and their athletes. Um, and it was also uh, used by their athletes and their soldiers, considered a Soviet military secret, as well as in their cosmonauts uh, in their space program. Over time, the Soviets also investigated its additional health benefits, which they coined as an adaptogen. Adaptogens are chemicals that don't have a specific effect, like you take a medication for that creates a path way that does a specific effect. Adaptogens basically strengthen and normalize normal biochemical pathways that are faltering from stress or illness. And so it became much more mainstream in its use uh, in the Soviet Union and now in Russia. So it has a long history, starting out primarily as a stimulant for mental and physical performance, and now continues to be used for that purpose, but also now has all of these additional health benefits for people who are primarily suffering from the um, uh, ill effects of stress and illness. So the other beautiful thing about rhodiola is that it's totally non-toxic. Nobody has ever been hurt by overdosing on rhodiola. You might be a little bit overstimulated, but it doesn't provide those negative um, uh, bad effects that you can find with other stimulants, such as even caffeine. To this day, it is still heavily used by northern peoples, primarily in the Siberian and Mongolian area but of the world, but it also has become a very popular supplement amongst people in modern urban and rural societies. Uh, because of its physical and mental performance enhancement, it is still used by athletes um, and people who also want to uh, have more uh, mental clarity if they're studying for exams, for example, but also its additional health benefits, including some very good research on its anti-aging effects are used by people throughout the world uh, in this day and age. Rhodiola being totally non-toxic is also very helpful for people who are suffering from normal modern problems associated with work stress and daily stress. So why don't you give it a try if you find yourself in stressful situations. It certainly can help and it won't hurt you.